I don't think you want to overload it too much. That's a recipe for injury, which obviously is not a recipe. You never get in a cookbook and it goes smash your head into a wall to break it. Number one thing I get asked all the time is how do I get big jacked arms? And I get it, right? Because you could train nothing else and just sort of hide it in clothes, but wear a really tight t-shirt, you know, a medium, and you look like you're big. Everybody wants big arms. Of course you want big arms. Don't forget that symmetry is the most important thing. Uh, I mean, unless you could probably not work your legs. What are you even talking about? Don't worry about it. Point is, people keep asking for exercises, for biceps, triceps. We've already done one for chest. I'll try and make sure the video comes up here now so you can check that one out. But I thought we'd break it down. And I thought we'd do biceps and we can talk about it, the good bits, the bad bits. Uh, before we do get into it, remember, there's no real bad bicep exercise. If you enjoy doing it, you should do it. Or if you want to do it, you should do it. It's all about perfect form and time under tension, things we've talked about a thousand times. Also, um, these aren't like number seven is the least best and number one is the best best. These are just the ones that I personally think kick ass. Let's do it. Number seven is the bicep curl. Really, I'm going to go back on what I just said. This would be the best. If you ain't bicep curling, you're doing something wrong. And if you don't know what a bicep curl is. It's literally when you grab a barbell uh, or dumbbells and you curl it and you curl it up to your arms and uh, to your shoulders and everything is hunky-dory in muscle town. The, I guess the key to ensuring that you're actually, you know, giving your biceps a good workout is A, you know, go as slow as you can. Make sure you're focusing on that negative rep because, you know, that you're really going to smash the biceps then. But it's the idea of, you. it's a stereotype, right, when it comes to the gym. Uh, you shouldn't cheat on the bicep curl. People are like, oh, you cheat on the bicep curl. What an asshole. You shouldn't cheat on the bicep curl by leaning back too far because then you're putting back under unnecessary stress. But if you have done, you know, a load of good reps with good form and you find yourself starting to fail, you don't want to fail, there ain't nothing wrong with swinging it a little bit. There's nothing wrong with sort of leaning forward a little bit and doing that too or doing partial reps. That's all good. And you should absolutely do that. And this goes for everything, but I'll, I'll mention it here too. You can stand up and do them. You can sit down and do them. Just don't do the weird stuff where people like stand on a medicine ball and try and do them. That's when things get weird. It doesn't make a massive bit of difference whether you're sat up, stood up or sat down. It just depends on what, what you want to do. But make sure your bicep curling. If you want to do it with dumbbells, that's fine as well. Just curl, 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 curl. Curl until you can't curl no more and get some guns. Number six is spider curls. Now, not a lot of people do these. A lot of people rag on them. But when I was introduced to them, I just enjoyed it. And that's why I thought I'd throw them in here. It was, to me, just a different way of working biceps that wasn't as, not say dull, I enjoy working biceps, but it just, it just felt fresh. And essentially what you do is you lie on an incline bench and then you lay on it front first, so you're down like this, and you have a bar... Uh, on the floor that you pick up and then you curl it. And because you basically, you know, fought gravity because <laughs> you're now leaning on a bench, I just find it gives you a real good, well, I get a real good pump when I do it and I find it quite difficult, which I enjoy when I'm in the gym. Again, if you really want to see videos, they'll be uh, they'll be on the internet. You can just search for them. But I, to me, it's a good finisher for biceps, whatever the hell that means. It doesn't make any sense. But that's what I'm going to call it. So when I'm done and I think, oh, man, I just want to rep out maybe one more set. Yeah, I smash out some spider curls. You can do it with dumbbells as well. Um, it's probably better you go higher rep for that, I think. You don't want to be in that kind of position with a real heavy weight. But once you get into the flow and you really, really feel it, I think they're great. No idea why they're called spider curls. I probably is a reason that I should have come up with. And I haven't now. Maybe spiders are secretly jacked. Have you ever looked at a spider's biceps? Obviously not going to be as big as ours, just from like scale. But maybe all spiders are jacked. Maybe we all want to be spiders. Number five is concentration curls. It's kind of like taking a spider curl in many ways and doing it without equipment. You sit down, you wedge your arm, your elbow into your leg. Uh, and you kind of hunch over a bit and you just curl. You curl to your heart's content. Or you can do it by leaning on something and bending your back and swinging it that way. It really is a dumbbell variation of a spider curl without a bench in case you can't get on a bench. They've been done since the end of time. It's the kind of bicep exercise that not only do you see Arnold Schwarzenegger do in documentaries, but also Ron Burgundy in Anchorman. The concentration curl... You would think the bicep curl would be the most stereotypical one, but I would actually, I would actually give it to this. Uh, they are good. Just make sure you don't do what some people do. I see them doing it, and their form is about that. I think with these, you really need to go all the way up. You need to squeeze, and you need to fight it all the way down. I like them. You probably like them too. Number four is what I'll just call the twisting bicep curl. It has other names, but I, who cares, right? It's essentially the same thing. If you're going to do some uh, bicep curls with some dumbbells, just make sure you start with your 
uh, what do you call it? Knuckles facing outwards. So, you, and as you come up, twist them round, and then bam, smash it down there. And same when you come down, because don't forget the bicep has two different. Uh, is it the clues in the name, right? Tricep means three. Tri bicep means two. Two. So if you're coming up like this and you're switching it round, you're you're hitting both heads on your bicep, and again, it's just going to look better. So many people just focus on. It's fine if you're doing bicep curls because that essentially hits everything. But so many people focus on just one exercise and then, you know, they're, we'll just call it lower head and higher head. It, it just doesn't, it, it's out of whack. And that's why when you do this, you can see the, the, the bicep going crazy, like it's running out for the shops or something because you have two different heads that move around. So try doing it that way. If you're struggling to sort of get a proper uh, a workout, whatever, hands out, twist hands in, hands back out, everyone's happy. Number three is preacher curls. I like preacher curls because they really, really hit the, the top of your bicep. And I just get a kick out of that, I guess, when I'm doing them. You will have seen them in the gym. It's the piece of equipment that looks like a triangle. You, <laughs> you lean over it, and uh, the, the, the bar, or usually an easy bar, is, is on a couple of hooks, and you pick it up, and you, you know, you're facing down like that, and, and, and you go absolutely nuts with your arms into some kind of foam pad. Like I say, I, it's also something that people sometimes rely on too much, because that's all they do for biceps. And I just don't think you're going to be working your bicep totally in the way that you want. But it's a great exercise. You don't need to go crazy heavy on this either. I see some people go on the preacher curl. They do four reps. That's fine if you're trying to build strength. But I think if you're, if you're doing it to try and build muscle and to enter hypertrophy or whatever the hell you pronounce that stupid word, I, I really do think you want to be hitting 12 reps plus with that because it's an awkward, you know, it's an awkward position to be in anyway. And because you kind of negated the rest of your body and you're just focusing on here, I don't think you want to overload it too much. That's a recipe for injury, which obviously is not a recipe. You never get in a cookbook and it goes smash your head into a wall to break it. So preacher curls are good. Just don't over rely on them. Number two is an incline curl. Like it's when you sit down in a on a bench and you kind of, you move the pad back a little bit. So you're basically, I'm too far away from the microphone, but you sit down like this and then you curl up like that. To me, I would always rather just go back to a basic curl rather than doing an incline curl. But I get it. You don't want to do the same thing over and over again because you'll get bored and it's nice to have options. So you can absolutely throw that in there. And of course, you know, it's something that may, I mean, it doesn't really work with biceps, but the reason I think it's good to have variety is in case a piece of equipment is being used and you can't use it. So you're like, all right, well, I need to do something else. That's why it's good to have variation. I do do them from time to time. Again, I never go crazy heavy with them. I'd probably go 14 kilograms max. I just think in that kind of position, I don't need to be super strong from there. I just need to make sure that I'm wearing my biceps out. But they're good. Yeah, they're all right. They're all right. I mean, I would always just curl my ass off. But again, I'm trying to give you everything. And number one is cable curls. There's different variations you can do. You can obviously you do it on a, on a cable pullover machine. You can do it where you grab the, the handles like that and go, yeah, and you look at yourself in the mirror like, oh, I'm a buff dude. Uh, you can do single curls off something. You can connect, you know, you can connect a rope pulley and do it like that if you want, although we'll talk about that in one second. I think they're good because I'm looking at it from my vantage point. They're fun to do. They're fun to do. And if you do, if you do have a, a cable pulley machine in front of a mirror and you get to go like that, let's not pretend that people don't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> because they do. There's no point pretending otherwise. The mirror is a really important tool in the gym because it allows you to watch your form. That's why they're there. But an added benefit is that you can be a vain Mother Hubbard and no one's going to get mad at you. And that's why the cable curl is so fun. It's another one that I think is really good to do at the end of your of your bicep routine. Put it on quite a light weight and just sort of smash them out a little bit and you walk out there with a great pump too. And you'll feel good. And a lot of my fitness stuff is all about feeling good. I also said I'd promise you a rubbish one or one that sucks. It doesn't suck as an exercise, but again, it's the people that I see in the gym that are doing hammer curls <laughs> to work their biceps. And it will work your biceps. A hammer curl is this. You're literally like a hammer, right? Like, dun, 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 dun. I don't know why it's playing Metallica. But you, as soon as you move your hand position to that, is that a neutral grip? I don't know what you call it. You are working your forearms more than you're working, maybe not more than you're working your bicep, but you're taking a lot of the load off your bicep to your forearms. So if you're trying to develop big biceps, why would you do hammer curls? Like I hear it all the time. It's like, what are you going to do for bicep? Hammer curls. What are you trying to work? Biceps. Do you want big forearms? Not really. Ah, <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with doing hammer curls, but just do a normal curl. That is going to work your biceps more than that. And that's why it absolutely baffles me sometimes and I don't get why people do it. So do hammer curls, do reverse curls, but you are bringing your forearms into it, which is important. You want to have good forearms as you do everything else. But it is a daft thing to do if you are looking 
to have big biceps. And that's it. That's the seven exercises I think are best for biceps. May have said 10 earlier because I'm an idiot. Oh, well, I'll try and edit it in so you won't even know. And one that sucks. Although it doesn't really suck. It's just one of those things. And when it comes to arms as well, some people, they train arms on their own day. Sometimes, you know, people will train them after back or they'll switch them around. I try and do around about 10 sets twice a week. Uh, I always train it after I do back biceps. So once I do back, I'll do 10 sets and so on and so forth. But make sure you find what works for you. Use all the information you can find on the internet as a starting point or just to put in your brain and then make sure you manipulate it so that it works for you best. Because you're different. You're different to me. You'll be different to other people that you see. And there's no point There's no point pretending the same thing is going to work for everyone. Because it's not. Hit that like button. Please like it. Because if you don't, where's my self-worth? It's in the toilet. Hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see that number go up. Uh, I've got a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash SimonMiller316. Because YouTube pays me no money. But also, that's like a shop. So you can get different things from me. You support me. I'll support you right back. And uh, come say hello on Twitter at SimonMiller316. Come say hello on Instagram at SimonMiller316. And other than that, I'll see you soon.